Big soul, bro. What up, bro? How are you doing? It's good to have you, bro. It's good to have you. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Bro, as a fan and a friend, like I like what you're doing with your talent. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious, bro, when does this start? Do you grow up knowing that I want to do TV, I want to do film? Mm -hmm. Where does it start from for you? Yo, dog, like, like I, I had a simple life, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was a singer, but I didn't know what that meant. Okay. Because since I was a little kid, I would go to church, you know? Yeah. And then I remember there were, there were, there were these chicks that would hate on me, bro. For singing? Cause, yeah, because when, hey, yeah, when, sing when they said, when they said, dog, when they said, start a song, because I, I had the highest voice. Yeah. So when they said, start a song, I'm like, oh, these chicks were like, <laughs> Yo, what you doing? Yeah. But anyway, that, you know, I, I think luckily, you know, how God sort of places, yeah. you know, he places his sort of plans yeah. with me. There. I moved from Skumansdal because I come from rural areas, to Makai, you know. Yeah. And then I moved from there, went to uh, Inelspray, the legal, that's where I stayed with my mom. So it, life as a guest and life as a Makai is a bit different. It's a bit different. But that helped me a lot because then that's when I started church and discovering that. And then that's when I joined a school choir and discovering that. And yeah. from then on, music then became me. So music became you, but... You are more famous and known as an actor. Yeah. Is this one thing to you, or like when does it transition from the music to the acting, or is performance just one big field? Uh, you know what? It, for me now, it's one big field. Yeah. But when I started, it was more of music. It was more music. Yeah, I wasn't really going to study acting because when I spoke to my neighbor, he was studying um, classical music. Okay. Yeah, opera. So Your neighbor in the rural areas. No, no, my neighbor now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know, bro. <laughs> that is no, man, that maybe. <laughs> no, Utabo. Utabo, you know, he was way ahead in terms of music. Okay. So he went to study TT, uh, classical okay. opera. He was like a baritone. Okay. Um, then from that point, he was like, yo, dog. Because I was like, yeah, I want to come through, you know, and see what I can do with TT. TT yeah, because yeah, there was the, like huge arts campus, which used to be incredible. So yeah, and then he said, dog, Utabo said, yeah, I'm not sure if you really want to study classical singing. You know, and what did he advise you to take? Cause I know you yeah. went to TT, so that's him basically seeing someone that has done it and that's mm, really something mm, you like, mm. and you're following those footsteps. But you went there and studied mus musical theater instead. Yeah, right. So that involves performance. Yeah, the singing. So it brings it all together. Yeah, I, I think okay. Track back. I think maybe he just he looked at me and realized, nah. You know, <laughs> this guy, that's this guy, your papa, you know, yeah. you can't just sing opera, your papa, you just can't, <laughs> I can't imagine. He said, he, said, he, said, try, he said, no, try this course, yeah. they, they sing act and dance. And I went back to Petra audition, dog, and clap, clap, clap that thing, so, dog. Yeah. And then they called my mom and they said, actually, he was one of the best auditions we've had. Wow. To some course I didn't even know existed, you know. So you killed it there, you clearly killed it. At TUT, yeah. to a point where you now went to study in the States. Yeah. How do you yeah. make that transition? Does everyone get offered a role or do you have to like be top of the top, cream de la cream type of thing? I, I guess there, mu there must be some sort of potential they yeah. see in you. Because when they chose, they chose me and four other guys. Yeah. Some of them were fourth years and we were third years. That's serious. So it really was, uh, they just decided who they wanted to pick. Wow. You know, I guess one of some of their best students. So you moved from Skuman's Dial. Yeah. Coming to Pretoria from the, for the first time. Oh, yeah. Learning Pretoria real quick. Now you have to go to the States. Yeah. How is that like transition in terms of like, I want to call them labels, but yeah. it's big like cultural shocks and transition. How do you handle that? Jeez, like I've always been moving all yeah. my life. Because I've uh, like Skuman's Dial has been like crash baby, the dark black baby. <laughs> <laughs> from crash to, to, to high school, then I stayed at Gassi. Okay. So from rural areas to Egas, yeah, that's a different life. It's a different from life. From Egas to Pretoria, that's studying it. now, yeah. Nabilungu, that's a different life. Exactly. You know, and then uh, luckily I was chosen to go to America in Ball State, Muncie, Indiana, mm. to study, you know, like an exchange, like an exchange program that we did. Okay. And that, uh, that's another culture shock for me. Okay. And it was snowing, it was like February, so the whole time it was snowing. Snap from Pumalanga to yeah. snow. Yeah, and then you get to the, the, this big library that has internet and and there's just like books everywhere and it's just like a craze of entertainment and, and knowledge that I was like, wow. wow. Then that was it, I came back, I did my first show, Shagazu the Musical. That was my first show. That is in South Africa? Yeah, yeah. Do you come back from the States to South Africa and then leave for Europe to do The Lion King? How does that work? Do they spot you in America? Uh -huh. Just tell me about that. I came back from America, then I had to finish my six months. Because remember, this is my third year. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. But as I'm finishing my six months, I, I get a call from Dion Opperman that okay. they, they're looking for someone like me to audition for a role. So my first show 
I was still a student. Oh, serious? Yeah, my first Just professional. Yeah, my first pay slip. Serious? Yeah, so I was still trying to finish. But already wow. my head was like, I want to work more. And then I booked Dream Girls for, for, for the following year while I was still a student, finishing Shires with a musical. So I was already set, In, knowing yeah. exactly, okay, next year I'm doing Dream Girls from January to July. Yes, it was cut short. The run was cut short at Monte Casino. But my, my wow. you know, the plan was moving. Those are big jobs, bro. Yeah, dog. So now when, yeah. when you get, a, do you get a call or do you get call to audition for the role of Simba in The Lion King? I mean, like anybody yeah. in South Africa, when they talk <laughs> about The Lion King, bro, yeah. it's like our breakthrough yeah. for theater. In terms yeah. of entertainment, that's yes. the, our biggest export. Yeah. And you go there, not only take part in The Lion King, but you play Simba. Yeah, that was finally yeah. a student. Now, now. Yeah, it was good yeah. to now Lion King. Good to hey, hey, Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. But, but geez, like I consider myself blessed. Because even before The Lion King, I, I booked The Phantom. So when they were cutting Dream Girls short, people were panicking, dog, we don't have jobs. What are we going to do? Then I went to audition for The Phantom. And I remember when I told my agent, and my agent, I still, I'm still yet to actually confront my agent about this. <laughs> and she knows, <laughs> you know, to say, because I said to her, I want to audition for The Phantom. Yeah. And there's no, it's unheard of for a black boy at 22 Two. to come here and be like, yo, I want to audition for The, the Phantom. Phantom. And she said, I think you're young. And I think Yerkin may maybe want to say, I think you're black. <laughs> <laughs> and if she sees this, she'll be like, I want to kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but she said, but I think you're black. Yeah. Exist, you know, you know, like, so I was like, you know what, it's fine. And I remember when I was auditioning for Phantom, left nail sprayed, wearing black pants. I remember black shoes, some white shirt, dog trying to be formal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like old swag, you know. Yeah. I didn't have anything to eat. I was late rushing, got on stage, auditioned. I started having a panic attack. Before the audition? Be it, it, on stage. Are you serious? singing because the because wow. this the song um music of the night is the biggest songs in musical theater done wow. by andrew lloyd whereby it's like huge wow. so i'm like ah and i'm like oh my god oh my god i'm panicking i don't know what to do and then i'm like you gotta breathe you gotta breathe you gotta breathe dude you're 22 yeah cheese dog and i sat down they gave me water i had to lie down a little bit <laughs> Cause of the cause of the the, the the taxi driving, cause of the not eating, cause of yeah. dehydration yeah. and all of that, you know, and things we take for granted, bro. I left and then they called me back after the panic attack. Yeah, called me back. I did the same thing and then they they gave me a call. Yeah, hey, you'll you'll cover the Phantom. I was are like, what are you talking serious? about? Like, what are do you, you mean? Serious? Yeah. So that's how that started. So really, that role for me it's still pivotal even now in your career because I'm the only black Phantom in Africa. But for me, that's one of my actually personal highlights and highlights that that the world, not the world, that South Africa doesn't know about. That is, which is very important. Yeah. But we're really not much in, you know, sort yeah, of so educated like, in theater, and it's, but it's exactly. all right. You know what I mean? Like even listening yeah. to you speak, it's already an education for me. Yeah. But I'm curious, bro. Like when you now do these things, like book the fans, and this mm -hmm. is obviously amazing from you because you're informed. Yeah. When you tell them back home, you tell your mom that this is the type of stuff you're doing. Yeah. Does you get the context of how big? No. You are achieving. Yeah. It's worth the money. How much are you making? She's got my phone. What is right? You what know what I mean? Right? Yeah. So I, no, I think for for her, it was just like my son is working, He's working. and I guess it's every parent's comfort. Exactly. That you, you know, know your kids are working, and most probably the, the the industry I've ch I had chosen was a bit strange. Yeah. Like I've just graduated in musical theater, black boy. What is this? What, did, what you are know? you doing? You know exactly. what I mean? But it's only to hey, hey, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so the show was for me one of my highlights. And then I had to leave then the Phantom moving mm. to the Lion King. Yeah. But I had been auditioning for Lion King for three years. Are you serious? Yeah, two, three years, yeah. But serious? the first time John and them, the sort of the associate producers came through, mm. the first time they'd seen me, they're like, we'd like to fly you to Florida to, you to do your final audition. Are you serious? Dog rushing quick. Went to Florida, to a Disneyland, and then yeah, then I got a flight. Yeah. yeah, went back to Atlanta, came back, finished the Phantom. Wow, and then I got an email. Yo, you're Simba in the Lion King UK tour. Bro. Yeah. Now, though, I'm curious. You kill those. You kill Simba, the role of Simba. You tour. You live in the UK. Mm. You've done amazing things. But you come back to South Africa, and you are part <laughs> of top actor. This is a competition. Yeah. Do you feel like the industry doesn't respect you? Why are you competing for a role? Do you have any? I'd say ego about it because you've done great things already in this field. Like mm -hmm. you should know what I'm doing. How do you feel about being part of a competition? Jeez, I think for me, here's one thing about Nick So. Mm. I never complain. Okay. Because I've always worked hard for everything I've accomplished. I've never complained. Mm. So I came back, I did Top Actor. For me, it was just to expose myself to TV. Okay. Because leaving the Lion King, I was, I was panicking. Very long story short, you audition, you get into Top Actor, SA, Africa. 
yeah. you finished second. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like you would I didn't want to win it. You I, didn't, I didn't want to win it. You I should like have won it. You should have won it. Because, I mean, it's, it's stats. I mean, Altif is a great actress. She you is. can never take that away from she her. Is. She's phenomenal. You know what I mean? But I guess she won and was chosen for whatever purpose the show needed. Okay. Right? And uh, I'm not going to stand here and say, uh, and say it makes me more talented. Of course not. Yeah. Of course not. I get on set, I, I, I slay. I get on set, I'm the, most, I'm the most incredible. You know what I mean? So for me, it was just like, it, it was her time. It was her time. Yeah. That wasn't my time. I was coming from my time, building up to another time. Exactly. Yeah. And like the, the actors from Top Actor have been relatively successful. Like mm. there are a lot of people that have made it. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's like an idle situation where it's better not to win, to make it? Arthur has done great, but I'm talking about, I'm looking at you, I'm looking at CC. Mm -hmm. You guys are all doing well as a group. Is it like a show that's built to just put you on out there, whether you win or you don't win, it doesn't matter. For me, it's all the hard work you, you I've, I've put, the hard work you put outside of that. Yeah, that's even post you know what I mean? show, post Because, Mina, I booked Skim some way before Top Actor was, oh. a top, tech, top Actor ad. So already that wasn't, it didn't put me on. You know what I mean? Exactly. It yeah, put Skim Sum is a yeah, huge show. Yeah, it put me on, on other platforms like the movies and yeah. BET, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, and the industry sort of knowing the, the muscle are. I have as an actor. Exactly, because yeah. BET is a big bag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but you touched on Skim Sum, you touched on the movies. You have killed it on Skim Sum, which is huge yeah. to the black market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have yeah. killed it on Afrikaans shows, you've done like three Afrikaans <laughs> shows. Ruru, Fude, you now want to see the lot. Yeah. And bro, I'm curious, when you now decide that all this fame that I've immersed in this, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to leave it, especially Skim Sam, mm -hmm. and go to an uh, Afrikaans market, which mm -hmm. Steven Dillon is, you know, mm -hmm. it's a relatively Afrikaans market. Mm -hmm. What is that decision? Is it like furthering the career, furthering the craft, or is it just, I want to try something different? It's, it's everything. It's both. I mean, I love Skim Sam. I love Sakila, dog. That's one, of the, <laughs> like, that's, that's one of the most important things I've ever created. You know, yeah. Sakila is loved. And, 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 and sometimes it shocks me how much Sakila and Kiza means to people. Exactly. But, you know, I think the reason why I went to Seven the Land, you know, was because of the market, was because I wanted, to, I wanted a new challenge. I wanted something to refresh my craft. Mm. You know what I mean? Because the reason why I left The Lion King was the same thing. The reason why I left The Phantom was the same thing. I, I, I always want to expand in a certain way for my craft. Yeah. So I always grow and be better. The beauty is that when you come back, if you do, then you're bringing a fresh energy into the yeah. role. Yeah, but like I've mentioned that you've killed it in theater, mm -hmm. you've killed it on screen, mm -hmm. you've killed it in cinema, mm -hmm. and now you're going to the music. Well, yeah. Are you bored of playing other people? I'm not bored. I'm, I'll still act, but I'm, I'm becoming the full version of me, yeah, of Nick Soul. It started with the music and it will end with the music. Wow, yeah. You know what I mean? And the acting will come in and out. I love acting. I love being yeah. creative. I love being crazy. I'm not normal at all. But when it comes to the music, dog, that's when I feel like God lives in the present Are you for me. That yeah. is deep. That is deep. <laughs> but I can understand why. Yeah. Why? I mean, like, I listen to a lot of radio, right? Uh -huh. And my favorite show right now is The Fresh Breakfast. Fresh I know oh, DJ Fresh, Fresh bro. Shout, Shout out to Fresh. Huge. Is Shout a huge Fresh, fan of Nick Soul, the musician. Mm. And one of the videos, like, your videos that train every day. <laughs> the Tito one. Bro, that was the first one to train. DJ yeah. Fresh loved it. He plugged mm -hmm. it on for days. Is that a concept, a marketing strategy to say, I'm moving from acting to uh, music, so I want to make these videos? Or are those videos just Nick Soul expressing himself? Uh, a, a bit of both. You know what I mean? I'm very creative in, in when it comes to music. Mm. You know? Uh, it, it's not just singing for me. There's a lot of factors and things that come to play. Yeah. So the videos were... Because this country is very, I'm sorry, it's stuck up in this industry. If you're an actor, you must act. If you're a singer, you must sing. It's not like America where Jamie Foxx can do it. You know what I mean? Where, where Rihanna can jump from movie to music. Where whoever, there's a lot of actors that sing in America. Sutton yeah. Foster on Broadway to, you know, the small screen. Hence, I studied what? Musical theatre. Yeah. So I can sing, act, and dance, and create, and write, and direct, right. and you know what I mean? And do all of that. Without anyone frowning upon yeah. like, what's your beauty. Yeah, I mean, look at Jay Hart, look at Jamie Foxx, look at all of these people. Do Which are amazing at that. Yeah. But in fairness, right, what I, I also like realize is that moving from acting to music is a bit tougher than mu moving from music to acting. Yes. So, yes. is the struggle like, you, do you feel like you're starting a music career and unaccomplished? Or do you feel like it's easier as a celebrity, someone that's known, to start in music? It's helping me, you know, because I'm, I'm in the public eye. That's helping yeah. me. But secondly, you know, the, the, 
people people want to be sure of you know what i mean yeah. it's okay this is it hence those videos for me yeah and the comments of the reception i'm getting from like people so you can say yeah they're like oh my god we've never heard something like that. then i'm like okay cool then you know now so that then you know sick. here's my album but i've been doing <laughs> this for years <laughs> for years like this is you know what i mean before the act yeah so i'm just showing you that i can actually sing i'm not trying to fight to prove anything yeah here what i can do but actually there's more to that and that's my album therapy you know Talk about the album a bit, bro. What, what is the album? What does it mean? Uh, the therapy means everything to me. Yeah. Right? It comes from heartbreak, hence Sibongile. And Sibongile, I met a girl called Tuso. Yeah. Then from that point, but I wasn't ready because I was still getting over the hang of Sibongile. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then Tuso left. Okay. You know what I mean? And from that point on, then I sort of find myself through and walk, you know, in love and life. And then, you know, I'm still yet trying to find my Slindile that's already <laughs> in the song, you know? Okay. So the song is about me walking through love. Yeah. And hence, Bongil is pivotal in this whole album. So that, that, that's why it's therapy. It's, it's a healing. It's healing for me. It's healing for the masses. I want this to be sort of a lifetime pocketbook yeah. for every human being, you, you know, so that it walks with them through whatever feelings they're having. Mm -hmm. But also, we men don't talk about issues. So it's, it's important exactly. that I, I was opening a different channel. Yeah. How about if a male was hurt? Yeah. How about if a male was going through certain feelings? Because we do, but sometimes we don't know how to express it because we're, we're masculine and male, then we start hitting women. And it's okay, it's okay to exit if you're unhappy. Yeah. So that's why, for me, it's my, it's my part to say, yo, we feel as well. It's yeah. great, I love it. Yes. I just want to talk in closing about Nick Soul feature-wise. What is it? Is it <laughs> music? It is. And bro, yeah, I see dog. you. Seven the line, the rule of your there. It was a way to get back the land. It was a way to. Are you don't, getting don't, in there? And I'm on the new season of Arab Saunders, by the way. I, on SABC2. Bro. Which is a brilliant show. People must watch out for that. I play a incredible role, Freedom. Yeah. It's incredible. But um, I don't know. It's, it's the work you do like, that makes people yeah. want to work with you. It's a discipline, you know? And I've always, for me, hence I studied for it. Yeah. For me, it's everything. Discipline. Yeah. For me, it's quality. Is everything, yeah. you know what I mean? So that's what I'll continue to do, you know. And the music, maybe three more albums coming before thirty-five. Maybe a couple of movies coming. Maybe you know, a couple of producing other artists and songwriting. I yeah. always do that. But at some point, Nick Soul will be a producer. Will be a producer. Uh, both screen, both music, okay. and also just giving back and making sure that I make it easier uh, for the kids who once have been where where I was. Yeah. So that it's just I I, I create a vehicle that it's easier for them. We're yeah. looking for those people, the that, talent, the, the love, talent. The you know what I mean? Yeah. Because we need that talent to inspire. Yeah, and you're only 29, bro. Yeah. You've done so much already. And when you speak about 35, I can only look forward to seeing what it is you're going to do. Yes, sir. Today, we look forward to a lot more years. Yeah, a lot man. more interviews with Nick Soul. Yeah, yeah man. Sir. Yeah, the next time I come here, I want to come with my summers five and hours, Grammys hours. and my self test dog. Exactly. <laughs> stank, stank. Yeah, and that time I'm still playing it, playing it forward, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Thank you for coming through, Nick. I yeah, appreciate man. it, bro. So when are you and Dennis getting married? And with Sissy, you mean Sissy? <laughs> oh, polygamy. <laughs> <laughs> Tim. Don't worry, your best life. Go ahead and live it, baby.